it seemed to Vandiyadeva that the horses were moving in an endless way. Has this Vaishnava really deceived us? Are you going to surrender us to the enemy? The forests were thick on both sides. Looking inside them is a terrible darkness. I don't know what kind of dangers exist in that dark forest. Leopards, bears, elephants, venomous beasts with these may lurk enemies, who saw it? Did you say that Tombala is the last place Chola Sanyam holds in the southern direction? Where is he taking us? Fortunately there was a little moonlight. Moonbeams played across the sky-high treetops. The light of temptation was sometimes falling on the path. The three horses going in front were sometimes seen as shadowy figures. But only the sound of horses' hoofs could be heard incessantly. Suddenly some other sounds were heard. Unexpected sounds in the middle of the forest. The cacophony of many human voices. There is a sound of joy. Cow. There is a light between the trees. Along with the light of the sardines, the light of the burning stoves like large canals is also visible. Aha! Who are the warriors frolicking in the middle of this forest? Chola warriors? Or soldiers from enemy forces? Vandiyadeva would have thought very little about this. Vandiyadeva did not notice that in that short time the horses that had gone ahead stopped suddenly and one of the horses turned back. The returned horse came forward and approached Vandiyadeva's horse. The person on top of it suddenly leaned towards Vandiyadeva and gave a punch. When Vandiyathevan staggered from the shock of the blow, he grabbed one of his knees and pushed him. Vandiyathevan fell to the ground with a thud. As fast as he came, his horse galloped a short distance away and then stopped. Meanwhile, the warrior who had pushed him jumped down from his horse and approached Vandiyadeva. He grabbed the knife from Vandiyadeva's middle and threw it away as he staggered to get up. Immediately Vandiyathevan was revived. And the rage was raging. He jumped up and stood up. Clasping both hands tightly, he punched the man who pushed him with a diamond-like fist. Will the person who bought the punch be idle? He also showed his hand. A great battle took place between the two. Gadoth Jajan and Adumpan pretended to fight. Lord Shiva and Arjuna, who were in agony, tossed and turned like a tie. They collided as if two displacements of thick yards collided with each other. Alvarkadian who had accompanied Vandiyathevan and the soldiers who came before them stood aloof and watched in amazement. In the moonlight, which was often disturbed by the movement of the tree branches, they watched the wondrous fight unblinkingly. Soon footsteps were heard. Some of the soldiers with lighted torches in their hands came to the place, pulling away the branches of trees. Those who came like that also stood watching the raging battle with amazement. In no time a large crowd had gathered around. At last Vandiyadeva was pushed down. The warrior who pushed him sat on his chest and untied the coil of cloth wrapped around him. He grabbed the leaf inside it. Even Vandiyathevan tried to prevent it but his efforts did not work. When the straw caught in the warrior's hand, he jumped and ran towards the crumbling light pole held by the people standing around. He gave a signal and two soldiers came running and caught Devan unable to get up from the ground. Vandiyadeva, in unspeakable rage and passion, said, Sinful Vaishnava. Can you commit such a betrayal of friendship? Rest that leaf from him. He shouted. Father. This is impossible for me. All Workadians said. She she. I have never seen such a coward as you. Did I rely on you for help? Vandiyathevan said. All Workadian got down from his horse and went near Vandiyadeva and said in his ear, Ada said. To whom you brought the straw, it has gone. Why are you lamenting in vain? He said. The other soldiers looked at the face of the warrior who was reading the leaf in the dim light. Immediately a great cheer arose from them. Long live Bonnie's lord. Long live. Long live the foot of the alien king. Long live our youth. Long live the emergence of the Chola clan. Slogans like this were raised and spread throughout the forest. To the echo of their chants the birds sleeping on the tree branch awoke and flapped their feathers and made various sounds. In addition to those who had come before, 
many more soldiers came rushing to find out what was so special, pulling away the mangrove vines. When the hero saw the crowd growing, he looked around once and said, You all go to Basara. Make arrangements for the feast. I will be there in a little while. They all hurried away like a man. Vandiyathevan, who was badly beaten and punched, was sitting on the ground watching all this. He was immersed in a sea of wonder that made him forget all the pain that hit his body. Ah! This is Prince Arulmas Hivarmar. How much pain in his hand! What a rush! Even if you are stabbed, you should be stabbed with a ring hand. If he is stabbed, he should be stabbed not by hand. He has the beauty and majesty of Arcuna. There is the strength of Bhimasena. No wonder the whole country praises him. He was thinking that. Arsalang Kumara, who gave the name to this story, the brave warrior who no one can say in the history of Tamil Nadu, who turned the Chola royal clan into the famous immortal clan, Aralmas Hivarmara, who will later be known as Rajaraja, had to be introduced to the people in this unusual situation, without any symbol of the royal family. It's only natural that this can be a little nerve-wracking. But what can be done? How could we have seen him earlier if our protagonist Vandiyadeva has just met him for the first time? Aralmas Hithavar recently came towards Vandiyathevan. Vandiyathevan was startled for a moment wondering if his hand was coming to test the strength of his fist again. But seeing his smiling and blossoming face changed that doubt. My dear. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the beautiful island of Ceylon. Have you not come so far across the sea to join the brave soldiers of the Chola nation? Did I satisfy you with the valiant welcome I gave you on your arrival? Or is that not enough, and do you think you should give me a little potato pamina? Said the prince and smiled. Vandiyathevan jumped up and stood in reverence and said, Prince. The leaf given by their father has been given to them and my duty is over. I no longer need to save this life. If you like, we can read Yadakandam for a while. He said. Aha! What can you say? You no longer care about your life. That care is mine. Otherwise what answer shall I make to the younger brat tomorrow? My friend, the leaf I now read seems to be written by my brother-in-law's hand. Did he give it to you in person? He asked. Yes, Prince. I had the privilege of receiving this leaf in person from the hands of the younger bratty. Then I travelled day and night without stopping anywhere, he said. That seems good. Could it have been here so soon otherwise? What exchange would I make for such a rare favour? After saying that, the prince hugged Vandiyathevan to his chest. Then Vandiyathevan thought that he was in heaven. All the pain was magically gone from his body.